What's going on guys? Uh, this is going to be a strictly Red Tide informational video. Uh, I'm going to show you what's going on right now in the Atlantic. This is the worst I've ever seen it. Now stick around because it's not just going to be showing you the effects, but I had a buddy of mine come on out and he knows a lot about this and I learned a lot. I didn't know, I always was told it's an algae bloom and it's actually not. So we'll go ahead and get some educational stuff in here towards the end of it too. But just to give you a little teaser, this is what I was looking at when I uh, checked out the beach earlier. It's like that. Those are dead fish all the way up. So. <coughs> Stay tuned and we will uh, get down there and show you everything. What's happening guys? Joe Antonelli here. I'm just going to do another red tide follow up in uh, central Brevard County on the east coast. Uh, the smell is so bad. I'm not really smelling as much red tide today, but just the dead fish. I mean, I just looked out there and it is insane. We'll get down there now. I got a mask on and then a shirt over it. And I actually can't really smell it too much right now. So hopefully this works, but this is sad. I'm gonna see what's washing up on the beach and uh, we'll get down there <clears throat> and show you, show you what we can find. All right, we're gonna get on the other side. Bunch of Romola. Look at all of this. It goes on and on and on. It's just insane. So we got mullet everywhere. giant mullet. I mean, look at the size of that. And there's thousands of pounds of these washed up. This has to put some kind of hurting on the on the mullet population. I, I want to see what uh, what the mullet guys get this year. See what they what they notice. They're the ones that are gonna know firsthand whether or not the populations have been affected. But we're just gonna keep walking, see if we can find anything besides mullet. I've seen a couple of catfish. But it is definitely mostly looking like mullet. Must have some kind of little butterfly fish or something. I don't know. I don't know my tropical fish. That is an Atlantic threadfin or glass nose whiting. A bunch of more mullet. It's a little pump now. Pig fish. Pig fish wash out. We're still going, oh my gosh, this is not good. I really hope this stuff is almost over. I've only walked not even 100 yards yet. Here's another different species. We got a croaker. We got a croaker there. There's catfish and mullets. We're just gonna keep it going for a little while. I'll show you guys how concentrated this all is. Miles of this. Miles and miles. Look, there's a sheep head. We're seeing some different species too. It's not only mullet. Luckily, we have not seen a single snook, not a single redfish. No fish that I would consider uh, more like a game fish, but not to say that this is not important at all because it is. Oh my 
Oh my god, this is insane. So guys, this is absolutely insane. Uh, I would say that I'm not gonna be fishing the beach for a couple days, so the channel might suffer a little bit, but I'll see if I can find some other stuff to get up here for you. something different, a little white grunt. Look at that slob whiting. Some big whiting there. Not good. So we were just talking to the news, they're gonna be coming out here too. Getting coverage on this. Uh, this is just crazy guys, I cannot believe it. Let's go on for miles. Oh, God. I can smell them and I'm, I'm on the upwind side of them, so. And I can still smell how bad these things are. Kind of little tang. Just to add to the list of different species affected. The fresh one. So we're probably approaching a mile mark or so and uh, I have not came to a single person on the beach, which is not surprising at all, no one as dumb as I am, but the only reason I'm out here is to make this video for you guys. Um, hopefully I get to talk with one of my buddies that knows a lot about Red Tide, and I'll get something informative in here instead of just a bunch of scary pictures. But, uh, I mean, it just goes. Looks like it's thinning out a little, but then it gets thick again. Insane. I don't know how many times I've said that, but it is absolutely insane. I've lived here my whole life. I've been through a couple of red tides, but I've never seen one hit during the mullet run. And this is the result. Show everyone. These little birds walking around here. Alright guys, so I'm walking back now. I covered around a mile or so, I would guess. But, uh... I still see some out in the ocean too. You're not going to be able to see them on the GoPro because everything's too small. But I can see little white things floating out there. But they're still washing up. Uh, hopefully, this is the worst of it and it starts getting better soon. There's a little horn belly. A little horn belly there. But I'll keep you guys posted on the channel, so. Okay. Hopefully this is the worst. Hopefully this is the worst. All right, so we came back out here. It's about an hour later. You can see the tides dropped out. This is my buddy, Matt. This is gonna be the informational <laughs> segment of our show. And he's just gonna do a little bit of explaining what red tide is or what's actually going on here. We'll just walk it a little bit again to see if there's anything else. All right. 
So that's all the pictures you've been seeing. So Matt, what is happening? So or tell us who you tell tell us your background a little bit first. Um, I've worked in fisheries science and water quality science for eight years since I graduated from FIT, and I've uh, just been water sampling, fish sampling since then. FWC, St. John's Water Management. There we go. So he's got some background in this in this field. So what do you think is go? What's going on here? What, first off, tell people what's caused it <laughs> or what. The... Yeah. So red tide. People call it an algae bloom. It's not actually an algae. It's a dinoflagellate. So it actually can swim around and stuff. It's a little one cell microscopic thing. Got two little uh, flagella and it can swim around and they like to go toward the light and they like to go toward nutrients. That's what makes them a uh, pretty gnarly little thing. They can, they'll seek out areas of higher nutrients. And for whatever reason, it seems like we've got higher nutrients out here. And that's what's making this, uh, the numbers of the red tide dinoflagellate just bloom like crazy so they produce toxins that uh, they always they're always producing them and then when they die it also releases it and uh, we got this this wave action it kind of aerosols it so it gets into the bubbles gets up into the atmosphere as the wind blows it up toward us so we're getting this uh, toxins blown into us and uh, that's what the fish are dying from they're getting it it's messing, messing with their uh, functions just like it's uh, messing with our lungs and everything yeah so at the inlet I saw a fish that looked like they were still dying it would be molt they would kind of go down and then come back up almost like a wounded bait but there's no visible nothing wrong with it no bites or anything but they dive down and they come up like they're gasping for air then they go back down again like these big giant molt like we're seeing here and you've never seen this many dead fish right not here this is, this is pretty bad and and blame that on it, line it up with the mullet run. These are these are all big road mullet, is that right? Or are these kind of mullet? Yeah. It's like they will be, they would have been. These would have been what uh, all the mullet fishermen would have been chasing all over Florida in the next few weeks. So it'll be interesting to see what numbers change in that when people are weighing in their mullet. But there's your guys' information. Just wanted to get something a little bit educational in here instead of just a bunch of dead fish pictures. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.